I'm what you call a grill master, but sometimes getting everything outside can be challenging. There's got to be a better way. Oh, there is a better way. So let's get to work. I started off by cutting down some hickory because this is for a barbecue. What other wood would you use? Hickory. I needed to throw together a couple panels. These are going to eventually be the end pieces that are going to hold the bottle opener and magnets and all that fun stuff. So I broke out my trusty Harbor Freight clamps, some wood glue, a glue brush, and I squeezed everything together for a little bit. Once everything came out of the clamps, I broke out the orbital sander to flatten it down. But while I was sanding, I came up with a good idea to use all those extra spice bottles I just bought. If I save everything that comes out of the sander, I'll have plenty of sandings to make custom wood putty the next time I need it. Just be sure not to get them confused with your other seasonings or bad things could happen. That's the second hot dog I've ruined today. We're going to be using box joints or finger joints to hold this thing together. You could just as easily do this with a router as on the table saw, but I saw a really neat jig put together by Nate Large and I wanted to try it out. If you've never seen his channel or just want to build a jig of your own, I'll put a link up here in the corner. The bottom half of the front and rear panel are going to get finger joints and both side panels will get matching ones. After that, I found the center of the bottom half and then took it over to the drill press to make a hole that will eventually receive a magnet. I wanted to make a template for the handle to make sure it felt good in the hands before I started wasting good wood. So I broke out my French curves and drew something up. After that was complete, I brought it over to the bandsaw to cut it out. And finally over to the spindle sander to sand down to the lines. The real handle is going to be a laminate of hickory and mahogany. I needed to resaw these down and my bandsaw is just a little too cruddy to do that so we did it on the table saw. Unfortunately I didn't raise the blade high enough and I had to adjust it a few times but we eventually got there. The goal here is to leave a little strip in the middle so it doesn't come apart on the table saw and then we can just finish it up with the flush trim saw over on the bench. We're going to pause here for a moment so I can share with you a good old pro tip. See where my fingers are? Don't put your fingers there. I laid out some paper to glue up the laminate, rocking my brand new band-aid. It totally has nothing to do with what just happened in the last clip. We are going to make a mahogany sandwich, which probably tastes a lot like my hickory flavored hot dog I had a little while ago. After the glue was applied, I did my best to keep everything even, and then emptied my entire clamp rack onto the piece to keep it as flat as possible. After it came out of the clamps, I traced my template onto the top of it, took it over to the bandsaw, cut it out close to the line without getting too close, and then sanded to the line over on the spindle sander. Since I had the tools set up already, I went ahead and cut out the corners of the panels. And if you've been paying attention, I think you know what comes next. Over to the sander to sand down to the lines. Who would have thought? I needed to make a panel that will eventually be the bottom of the caddy. So I resawed a little bit more hickory and then threw it in the clamps to dry. I waited for the Benadryl to kick in that I put into my wife's lunch so that I could get upstairs and take out all of our drawer liners. I sanded the bottom panel flat and then started marking out the mortises that will eventually receive the handle. I took it over to the drill press to hog out the majority of the material in the middle and then finished it up by squaring the edges with a chisel. And then brought one of the side pieces over to the drill press. I added three holes in the side so I could add removable hooks to hang all of our dirty utensils from while barbecuing. The glue up for the body needs to move quickly so I set everything out, got all of my clamps ready, so that I wouldn't have to mess around with them when the time came. I decided to go with Type Bond 3, not because of its waterproof features, but because of its extended setup time. Because if you're anything like me, even with a bunch of preparation, you start to accidentally glue things together the wrong way. Oops. 
I added a little bit of glue into the mortises and inserted the handle. Then all that was left was to get all the clamps on and make sure everything remained squared throughout the process. Which if your finger joints came out as well as they should have, shouldn't be too difficult of a task. To add some strength to the handle and add a little decorative touch, I decided to make my own dowels so the mahogany would match the rest of the box. Sometimes after a long stressful week at work, nothing feels better than going down into the corner of the basement and beating your wood into a hole as hard as you can. Repeatedly, until your spouse starts to worry about you. I marked out the location of the handles on the outside of the panels. And then referencing those marks, I drilled out the holes for the dowels, being sure not to go too deep. I threw in a little bit of glue and then pushed in some cutoffs from our brand new mahogany dowel. The bottom panel is going to be held in with a rabbit or a rebate, depending on what part of the world you come from. So I threw on the world's sexiest safety glasses and cut it out on the router table. I squared up the edges with a chisel, then measured the inside diameter we just made. I then cut down the bottom panel to fit, glued, and clamped it in place. I threw a couple pieces of painter's tape on my flesh trim saw to keep the teeth from digging in, and keeping my thumb far away from it this time, I trimmed up and then sanded the dowels. Now through the wizardry of video editing, I make the spice dividers. The installation of this is pretty straightforward. I use the spice bottles as spacers, put some glue on the dividers, and put them in between. Then after I placed the long piece in, I was able to remove all of the bottles and clamp them up. Just go easy on the pressure here. Because I'm a giant slob, I decided to tape off the area around the hole so I don't throw epoxy all over the place. I tossed the magnet in and whipped up some epoxy. And then I whipped up some more because that wasn't nearly enough. For the finish, I went with my old trusty standby, natural color Danish oil. I just love the way the Danish oil makes the grain on this hickory come to life. The final step is to mount the bottle opener. You could go a little bit higher, but I didn't want to cover up those beautiful dowels I just made. If I spent all that time in my basement beating my wood for nothing, that would just be a shame. And here we have it, the answer to all your barbecue problems. We've got multiple removable hooks for hanging your dirty utensils so you don't get the table dirty. Organized spice racks and a beautiful phone holder for watching your favorite firewood videos while you cook. And of course a bottle opener to enjoy an ice cold root beer on a hot day. This came out better than I ever could have expected. It's an absolute showstopper and if you bring this to your next backyard barbecue, everyone will be jealous. If you'd like plans for this project, I have them available on my website listed below. If you think I did a good job here today, please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be the first to know every single time I make a fool of myself on camera. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.